Hello, hello. Hello. Everybody, hey, all right. It's Susan, Dr. Hunt. Awesome, Dr. Halstead, Dr. Calvin, the general. We have- uh, The general. <laughs> uh, I see Dr. Holsinger there, several people. Okay, awesome. <clears throat> well, thank Hi, you all. Thank hey, you all. Hi, Walter. I'll be right back, guys. I got it. Doorbell here. I'll be right back. Oh, well, it's 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 no doubt Amazon, or I hope it's not pizza because that doesn't fit with Tiger Medical. <laughs> <laughs> no, no judgment, man. I still eat it too. Well, uh, <laughs> well uh, Diane. Hello. Happy anniversary. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, happy anniversary. How many? Forty. Only forty. Ah. <laughs> so uh, we'll we'll. Uh, We'll give it a couple minutes, uh, everybody. And it's so good to see you. It's actually even more than I thought already, just because it was kind of impromptu and heading into Memorial Day. But we're, we got a, you know, we've done, we've done a little preparation, as you would expect. Uh, we're just really super excited about this, you know, because uh, as you all know, uh, the number one wealth in life is health, first and foremost. And, and you know, whether, whether you, choose to, to join in uh, the system at uh, Tiger Medical or not. We really want this just to be informational. And I promise some uh, action packed uh, outside the box stuff uh, every quarter, just to kind of level up our wealth group experiences. And so we just wanted to, to do that today before we uh, all see each other and meet up in, uh, in Rhode Island. So uh, anyhow, uh, I'll, we'll give it just another minute or two. I got to try to monitor this, uh, make sure other people are joining in here and uh, everybody's looking good. Dr. Higgins, I see you over there. Yes, hello. How you doing? Good. All right. So uh, and we'll record that in case you got to leave or, or for other people not here. Uh, all right, uh, I'll, I'll keep, we'll keep an eye on this, Steve, if we got other people join in. I don't hear any crazy background noise, so that's great. Uh, you know, you guys all know the drill, so if you wanna, if you wanna mute just to be safe, feel free, but right now we, it sounds uh, totally great and fine. So I, we're just gonna hit the ground running. We wanna be mindful of your time. You know, we put this together. Steve's been kicking me in the ass to do this, uh, you know, way before now, but it, it is what it is. So he's, uh, he's just been anxious to, to kind of share some candid feedback. You know, we got a good group uh, from the wealth group that have moved forward with the system and across the board, whether it's weight loss, uh, you know, just more discipline, more energy, sleep. We hear sleep constantly. I heard today even on one of our check-ins, um, uh, the, the Lipskises were talking about uh, the, the benefits to sleep almost immediately. So uh, anyway, so that that's that. And uh, so I, I gave Steve kind of some challenge questions. He, uh, he likes to go on the fly, so I might just shake him up and, and trick him. Uh, but we're going to run the gamut. So I, I want to start by saying uh, you, thanks for giving us your evening. Can't wait to see you next month. Uh, I feel you threw some wrenches in our, in our group schedule. So it's going to be a real uh, a game of Scrabble uh, throughout uh, June, which really makes it pretty exciting. As you all know, we consider June and July, December and January. You know, we, we believe at the very least we live two years in one. Uh, and so you got to be healthy to do that. Uh, so we're, we're, we're just really jacked up about next month and, uh, and, and just taking it to the next level. So without further ado, uh, I want to, and oh, this is going to be super interactive. As soon as we get all, some of the things, since we got uh, 15 people or so on here, we will, uh, we're going to open it up. And, and so be thinking of questions or anything on your mind or things that you want to throw out there, whether it's about Steve, about Tiger Medical, just about in general, peak performance and health, you know, and, and what we love about Steve is that he embraces and utilizes our, you know, kind of holistic uh, mindset and principles, but with science and, and, and DNA and all that stuff. Uh, so, so not artificial and synthetic, uh, but also not totally woo woo without the science and the system, you know, so to, to me, that's kind of the, the, mar the marriage. Quick backstory, you read, as you know, in my letter to you a long time ago, and in uh, March, that Steve and I uh, truly go way back. I remember watching him on stage, presenting, hearing about his success and his companies, 
he was constantly featured as like marketer of the of the month or year and all the different examples of, of what he was doing in his business and you know his story of, of a hundred million dollars and uh not without some sacrifice and stress uh dr maline and 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 you know and it took a toll on him so he sought out health uh you know out of necessity really out of necessity having all things a literal army like you think you got people problems he had a little little army of people and and you know a great family but yet all the money he could ever dream to have and and suffering so uh that was his quest and i like that quest because it's personal it's not manufactured it's not just to have something to sell you know there, there's a passion there so steve uh, why don't we start there and just share with my, my friends here and family members, because that's really what they are. Mm -hmm. What do you think uh, drove you to want to move this into a business model to help other people when it really just began as something to kind of save yourself? Thank you, Scott. And uh, thanks for everybody. I'm really excited to talk to you and just good evening. Um, I, 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 you know, for me, what really turned it was uh, when I sat with Dr. McNamee and he went through um, a series of test results that I had never seen before, never heard of before, after trying to solve um, reflux and IBS and uh, some other issues that I had uh, um, for many, many years. And I, I went upstairs after my call with him and I told my wife, I said, that was the finest healthcare experience I've ever had in my life. And why can't, why isn't that accessible, you know, to people like us, you know, uh, running companies. And, um, and so that's really where the seedbed was. But what was interesting was, was Dr. Matt was also on his own quest. He had gone, he had practiced medicine in uh, San Francisco and then South in the South Bay area for about seven years mainly working with people like us, you know, people, tech execs, people with a lot of responsibility, a lot of stress. And he, he uh, mentored under some brilliant people where he developed this approach. And it's not just a functional approach. He's integrated several things. And uh, he said himself, I'm looking for a new model where I can go deep with people instead of this nonstop you know, uh, having 1500 patients a year load that he had to carry. And he couldn't, he couldn't take the time with people to educate them so that there would be compliance and change. Okay. And so, uh, so that's where that kind of came together. And for me, you know, I, I had my last company when I exited it, I got plenty for my rest of my life. I'm, I'm built this way. I've got to be pointing at something that's making a difference in the world. This isn't a pithy speech. Um, I, I had worked with pets my whole, for 21 years, and now I finally get to work with real people, humans. And, uh, and so that's why I started it, because I wanted people to have what I have, because I'm, I'm 58 now. I was 53 when I started this process. And uh, um, I feel massively better than I did at 53. My doctor, who's my best friend, said my labs look like they did when I was in my late 20s. Uh, you know, my basic labs that he does. And, and so that's really where it came from was, I know how busy you all are. I know how much responsibility you have. I know you travel. And I wanted to create a delivery mechanism combined with a unique medical model that would enable people like you to be able to get restorative care and really give you a whole new empowerment around what life could look like in your 60s, 70s, 80s, and 90s. So that, that's really where it came from. Well, uh, you know, obviously uh, it's super inspiring. And I think that, again, that's the kind of uh, mission we all appreciate. And, and nobody here is, wouldn't do it for, without the money. We wouldn't do it without the money, but we, we sure right. aren't doing it just for the money. And right. I think that that's... Uh, you know, that's really cool. Uh, having you know, studied and participated in functional medicine approach basically my whole life and second client, uh, first was a dentist, second was a functional medicine chiropractor that we actually uh, licensed uh, saliva and P tests across the country to chiropractors. 
uh, that was like my my second gig out, out of uh, uh, dental marketing for dent, mini implant supported dentures. Okay, so that that's uh, it's been very true to, to me, and I think to see what you've done with it, I like my uh, oh, you can't see it probably over here, but all my my youthful living and longevity and reverse aging books over here, and what I love is you've taken all that like the principles that, that, that have never changed, but with the science that's evolved, right? Yeah. So I got two questions. Actually, I'm gonna go first and everybody else can go. So I, I wanna know, forget about like, we love our doctors, okay? I pick doctors, they pick me, we love them. But at the end of the day, we always say their identity is not being a dentist. Right. And in fact, that's unique about the wealth group is they, that may be their means and it may be the superhero outfit they put on every day, but the, the, their life is, is a whole. And that's not normal in dentistry, which is why they are so unhealthy. Mm -hmm. So let's just back out and say entrepreneur, you know, entrepreneurial lifestyle in general. Why is it so different? And why is the health so much more challenging uh, for people like us? Okay. Uh, yep. Versus, you know, I mean, it's why they're here with me because you could go to any financial advisor, go to anybody else that treats every single person on the planet exactly the same or every dentist the same. Why are we such a different breed? And what are those things mm -hmm. that become our Achilles heel to our health? And, and how have you helped to combat them? Mm -hmm. uh, that's, a, that's a deep, good question. Um, well, I, I would say one, um, you know, we're, we, as a group, we are highly, highly conscientious. And so that, that drives us to a very high standard for you, a standard of care, uh, and, but also in running your business. And for me, it was, you know, at the end, you know, when I had almost a thousand employees, I was, how do I make sure that every single one of them, when they wake up in the morning, come with fire in their belly? And so you carry that uh, and um, then you add in smartphones and the, the incessant flow of information at us. And, and then you add in the idea of I've got people, I've got regulators, I got business goals and demands and all of that uh, puts a very heavy load on us that, you know, I studied um, a, a, um, Bruce McEwen is like one of the preeminent uh, endocrinologists of the 20th century. He died just a few years ago. And he talked about stress is cumulative. It shows up in your biology later in life. And, um, you know, I used to be a high level corporate banker. I was the president of a bank. And the stress there is a joke compared to what it's like running a business and, and having you be the ultimate person. You know, like today, I got a letter from the state of California charging me $6,500 in unemployment taxes, and I, and I didn't even have payroll in the state. And, you know, when I'm a banker, I don't have to worry about those duck bites. But when you're an entrepreneur, you have thousands of duck bites. And so just, just the unique nature of it. And the other problem with being a human rather, rather than an animal, an animal is one-to-one -one with their relation to their environment meaning when something stresses them, they get away from it and then they go back and relax. Humans, we're not like that. We ruminate about the past and we anticipate, anticipate things in the future and that creates stress and activates our autonomic nervous system and the sympathetic side. We're like, we're literally inventing stress in our head that goes right to our body. And again, that's all cumulative. And what I've learned from Dr. McNamee is everything is so interrelated. You know, he, when he talks about, uh, when he sees patients, he talks about how stress is so foundational to catalyzing so many physiological processes that start to break down all the body's systems. Mm. And so, you know, I mean, so all of you guys are carrying that and so am I, and, that, and that's, that's a unique thing. And that's, that's why we've, one of the unique things about what we do, he's not just a functional, he's, you know, he's a naturopathic MD, but he's also a neuroendocrinology expert and a gut expert and stress affects all of those systems. 
And so we integrate heart rate variability and sleep optimization with his medical approach. Hmm. And that's why, why we get results early is because we focus on the HRV and the sleep. Hmm. And that's where, you know, guys like Walter got good results pretty quick. Yeah, that's, well, I'm sure we're going to hear from Dr. Hunt in a minute. Uh, so, and Dr. Halsey was telling me about coming out to uh, Seattle and everything they did today too, or this oh, week. Oh, So I want to, um, I want to piggyback on that because first of all, that's not the thing we all on this screen want to accumulate. <laughs> we're trying no, to we don't. some stuff, gonna. but uh, you know, it, it doesn't start with us. So, uh, you know, I think that's a very, uh, a very good point. And I would like to ask you, uh, I always say you can't, you know, you can't out exercise diet. And I believe you can't out diet sleep. And I believe you can't out sleep stress. Right. And I think that it's the further, and I mean, I, I speaking from experience because I try, I'm, you know, mastered one, still stuck, mastered two, still stuck, Work, working on three. You know, and it's like the deeper you go in that that category, but we're sold, we're sold all, the next book, the next trend, the next diet, the next yeah. exercise. And and of course, now a little bit sold the next sleep, but but nobody's getting down into that root cause. And then what I love is that you unwind it. You're unwinding from the inside out. Mm -hmm. So my I got two questions. Uh, the first one's super easy, is what are some things for people that haven't yet gone gone into the medical institute, what are some things that you just instantly do? Like it was in your book. I mean, I think your no, book. I can do it. I can go through the process. Sure. Instantly, yep. well, not even the process as much as like, if tonight we wanted to do something different, what what's something that Steve says, this is like core principle number one, you can do this tonight. Yep. You know, like what, what are some things that help offset what you're talking about? Mm -hmm. and then uh do that real quick and then i'll ask you the the sexy question that i know okay. you're excited well about. and the thing about i what i was saying earlier it's not all bad news we can learn to self-regulate through all of that and change the game and so uh the you know as soon as you book with us you know you go into this um a uh, jump start call with a lady who's got 20 years experience with executive coaching and she's brilliant at getting right to the deep root of why you're doing this and why, because it, you got to have a strong commitment. Okay. Um, uh, you know, one of Robert Cialdini's influence triggers is consistency. And so what we want to do is help you find that key core principle of why you're doing this so that we can bring you back to it every time you don't want to do something and help pull you through because well, look, we're all so busy. And that's the other thing I learned about other entrepreneurs and myself uh, that I've, we've worked with is that uh, the load causes us to take shortcuts at times with our health be, that aren't necessarily good for our health or our performance in the long run because we're just so loaded down. And, and, and I'm telling you guys, you got to have help with this stuff. You won't make these changes on your own. I mean, some will, but most won't. And so you need that coach and somebody to pull you through it. But, uh, but then we go right into heart rate variability training, which is, you know, it's deep diaphragmic breathing, but you need the biofeedback device to be able to really know, um, am I doing it correctly? Am I getting into that coherent state um, that is balancing your autonomic nervous system and starting to heal your body and deactivating the HPA access and stopping, you know, excessive cortisol through your body. Um, you know, so that's the first thing we do. And I tell people, and it's funny, I get some people, they fight me on it. Don't they're like, ah, they don't do it every day. And then I get them to do it every day for five minutes in the morning, three minutes at lunchtime and 10 minutes at nighttime. We build from there, but I get them to do that. And about three weeks later, they're like, oh my gosh, I can feel it. And, and I understand it now. That's foundational because uh, what Dr. McNamee says is if, I, if we can't get them self-regulating their autonomic function and sleeping decently, he said, it's going to mute or mitigate the things he's doing downline clinically with them. Because when you're not sleeping well, you crave the wrong kind of foods. You're not getting autophagy at night. 
it's clearing out the cellular waste. You're not feeling rested. So that makes you take shortcuts. So that's the first thing you can do is learn diaphragmic breathing. You can do that tonight. You know, and if you work with us, we'll take it to a whole new level for you. Great. That's awesome. That's awesome. Well, uh, thank you. That's uh, pithy and to the, to the point. So, so Steve, I want to ask you, and then I'll stop and we'll take questions. Sure. For everybody. But I, I definitely want you to update everyone on the Alzheimer's thing because it's super cool. Yeah. Uh, speaking from an, an immediate experience of, of my grandma and seeing her, uh, you know, I mean, basically every year become a different person in the worst kind of a way and, and uh, you know, have this issue. Is, yep. uh, you know, I mean, everybody's probably experienced that at some, some level in their life. Uh, but but to, to understand that there are signs and symptoms early on, as well as more importantly, things that can be done to, to hedge, it, hedge it off. And to the conversations that you and I have had on your decision, deliberate decision to choose dentistry, much like I did, mm -hmm. for all the same reasons. Uh, uh, of how uh, our friends here are more susceptible just because of the, the things they're around and what they have to do on a daily basis. But I want to back this up. You're a practitioner of wealth attraction, money manifestation, mm -hmm. the same things that everybody on this screen that we work on daily, but certainly every quarter. Uh, you, you've participated, you've led masterminds, uh, still do. Uh, you've been in masterminds that I have led and so we, you know, you understand the game we're all playing here. Yeah, yeah. I'd love for you to speak to how, how the, the implications that health has as truly a wealth multiplier, your words, an attractor. And, and, and also, I'm going to say that a lot of times we all try to, it's, it's the greener grass thing. You know, it's always looking for the next best investment, looking for this, looking for that. And, and, and not understanding that like you can go out on a sunny day and you feel better. You go out on a cloudy day, you don't feel so good. Like we're all human. Right. But that, that we have sort of this weather inside our bodies that, that they, they, they mess with, you know, our, our thinking and our feelings. And they skew it to where we're not really authentic and raw. And that's part of the breathing you're talking about on the bio system. To me, there's also, a, a, you know, an energy level of this uh, and whether that's cellular or universal or all of the above, how does that play into, you know, this, your principles, what you've experienced and, and like wealth attraction lessons for everyone here? Can you guys imagine Scott as a journalist asking politicians questions? They wouldn't be able to handle one ounce of this. <laughs> so... That's a man, you're good. Uh, well, what I'll tell you is from about 2012 to 17, I was really an unhealthy person. And, and what led to that was in 07, when we only had two stores, uh, we had seven retail shopping centers and some, so we were also real estate developers and we had a Walmart project. We were the day before closing, gonna clear 6 million on a $60 million project. And it was going to be cash flow, beautiful cash flow for many years. We had pre-sold lows and nine out pads. It was beautiful. They bailed the last minute. And uh, it was because the subprime crisis was hitting them early at their customer level. And we, the next morning I woke up three and a half million in debt with no way to pay it off. And me and my two partners came together and we just said, we're not going to quit. We're not going bankrupt. We're going to pay this back. And we did. We took 10 years and we did. Um, but the toll that that took, because what happened was one of them stayed in and cleaned up the development mess. I did all the banker workout stuff because I was an old banker. And another guy went to a real estate company and ran it as president. And then I engineered a, uh, an acquisition where I got paid good, where we bought more stores. And we threw all of our money in a pot and we paid our bills. And we did that for 10 years and it worked great. And but in the process of overcoming the stress of that, plus having two preteens right when that happened, watching their dad, what's he going to do, you know, and then going, you know, you guys all, man, you probably all parented teens. That's a very stressful period of your life on top of it. And then we grew from two stores to almost 50 in about seven years. 
and scaled that. And I had to raise money and build a board and manage the board and oh, throw in there. I coached basketball for five years in the middle of it. I don't know what I was thinking, but I did a varsity basketball coach. And um, uh, I just hit a wall about 12, 2012. And I'm, I'm coming back to you, Scott, on this because the last five years, I was not nearly as effective. Like if I would have had what I have now, when I, if I would have gone those five years, we'd have had a hundred stores, not 50. Mm. Uh, because we, there were five separate acquisitions that I said no to because I didn't have the energy mm. to execute on them. And I had the negative energy of my marriage relationship was deteriorating because of me. It was me. It was all me. Um, and, and that's not attractional. You know, I was short with people and um, really struggled. And so from a wealth perspective, you know, what bailed me out was all the work from 1995 to 2012 was really good, but I just hit a wall. And it wasn't that it was terrible the last five years. It just wasn't who I was. And, and I got things fixed in 18. And like this company, you know, we've created it. And now it's seven figure business and we've created it like in two and a half years, you know, in a whole new space because that, I mean, it's just, it seems like every time I need a solution, it comes to me because I'm so positive and energetic and well-rested. And I mean, I can't fake this. You guys can see I'm not sick. Um, so, uh, so that would be my answer to that. Uh, and then I forgot your question was quite long. What was the rest of it? I, I think that, that was, that's super great and sufficient. You know, it's the, the ass it is, it is literally your book title patient number one and the asset being us first. Yeah. I started taking care of myself first and right. cause everything else gets better when you do that. It's counterintuitive. You think you're supposed to take care of everyone else and you guys are clinicians. You love people. You want to help them. That's how you where, how your heart is wired but you can't do a good job of it if you're depleted. Yeah, 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 I think it's good. And, and to me, it's just total alignment, you know, authenticity because you, you actually feel great and it gives you clarity of thought, confidence and all that stuff. Okay, so let, let's cut to the chase. Tell us some feedback that you have for us, okay? That you sure. know, you've, you've talked to, you know, whatever, a third, a third or a half of the, yeah. the team here. What, what, what have you noticed about some of the common challenges in particular for our doctors. And then would you, uh, would you also elaborate that into your updates? Just because I want to get them questions and, and sure. I know we all agreed to be done in an hour. So you're, uh, first of all, and I'm not just saying this because we have worked hard to upgrade our client since we started. This is the finest group of clients we have. And I'll tell you why, because uh, they've got great mindsets. You guys come to the table with a great mindset. You want change. Uh, you're also aggressive about implementing. Um, the worst clients we have, and it's probably the same for you with, treat, with, with uh, patients, is the ones that just won't do the work and won't, won't make the change, won't, won't follow through on your treatment plans. Um, that's not true of this group. And also, we love that you're clinical because you guys understand and appreciate the science of what we're doing. And um, Dr. McNamee is really enjoying it. And so, so are our coaches. So those are the things I'd say. Um, I would also say you come to it just like everybody I've talked about, a lot of cumulative stress load has been in your life. You know, you went to school for 10 years and then you spent a decade paying the debt off. And then you worked really hard in your forties and into the fifties to, to create some wealth. And there is some things showing up in people's biology now from that journey. Uh, the good news though, is you can correct it. So, uh, you know, uh, the other thing is um, that, you know, and, and it's kind of early yet for like Dr. Hunt, who started earliest, uh, you're probably just now going to start getting to the results phase with Dr. McNamee. What I will tell you from all the other patients going back, because we have like 60 some people in our program right now is there's a lot you don't know about yourself and because he is testing at such a different level than what your general practitioner is. And that is not a slight against your local doctor. They just don't have a payer system that'll support what we're doing. So you're gonna be looking at a lot of different information that you've never seen before. Um, and 
But the good news is Dr. McNamee will find it. Um, his model is very root cause oriented. And the last thing I can tell you that, you know, we're just learning one of the, so why did we do dentists? Why did we focus on dentists? We like the clinical nature, but you're also an entrepreneur. Also, you guys know all the statistics on suicide rates in dentistry and um, the pressure and stress of the work. Um, you know, it puts, it puts people in the profession in a place where uh, a place like ours can be extremely helpful. Uh, it's also, you know, um, I can do a quick primer for two minutes on Alzheimer's and what we've learned from Dr. Bredesen in a second here. Um, but the, the lifestyle and risk factors of your work do can have a uh, contributory aspect toward elevating your risk for cognitive disease. Okay, I'm not, now don't hear me, I'm not, Dr. Bredesen, I'm not Dr. McNamee. I'm not here saying, because you're dentist, you're gonna get Alzheimer's. I am not saying that. But what I'm saying is, is that the, the, the lifestyle of being one and uh, is potentially can be contributory to that, okay? So I'm trying to be very careful with what I say there. Yeah, um, they, they, you, you can talk straight to these Okay, people. but what I'll tell you is Dr. Matt is the most conservative, careful clinician about what he says he can do and can't do. And he looks at me right in the eye and goes, if I get them at the right time, I can absolutely make sure that they uh, uh, don't get the worst forms of Alzheimer's. I, I can prevent it based on what the, this training he's gotten by a UCLA professor. So um, that's so a good thing. Let me, let me jump in and just say that Here, here's the lesson wealth-wise. Uh, a, a vacation is a Band-Aid. Looking forward to something that gives you a, an adrenaline rush or yeah. that gives you a reprieve. If you need a break in the action, it's a it's a freaking band aid, and so the the fact it doesn't mean you shouldn't take a vacation. It just means you can't call yourself healthy if you need one, and so like I I love the fact that you're dialing in the daily success system because that's what we're all about in the practice yep. with right, the team right. is daily right. success system, and so to me that's that's it should be enjoying vacation, not so desperate for one. And the other thing is people here, we're immune to that. Like I, I've never in my life had a single doctor interested in me that, that they don't even grasp the idea. We have a few people that had to make a shift in, in life partners over time. Yeah. Majority wise, marriage, majority wise. I mean, nobody's ever contemplated. If they have, they wouldn't admit it probably today. Yeah. But about suicide. But like, yeah, our industry is ripe with the majority being unhealthy, desperate-minded people. We're right. all immune to that because we live right. at a higher level. Yep. But, but a lot of it, too, is that we're just conditioned to deal with it. Right. It, yeah, it, yeah. it yeah. doesn't mean that it's we're, we're actually healthier, right? And, and what we're trying to do, Scott, here is, you know, you guys are, have created wealth for yourself. And like Dr. McNamee says, the thing he's most concerned about in his own personal health is the health of his brain. Because, you know, we don't, you don't want that to go. You want to live in the 70s and 80s and enjoy that wealth you've created and not be battling that and be able to read books and talk to your grandkids and things like that. And that's what, the, that's what it's all about. And we just feel like by niching, so what we've niched into is C-suite executives and dentists because we feel like we can understand their lives really well and, and we're doing specialized research and the unique things that affect den dentists' health maybe the unique things that they're exposed to and things like that and trying to, trying to really gain an expertise in that. And, you know, and, and the issue with brain disease, it really comes from three main drivers, inflammation. And this, I'm citing this right out of the uh, training that Dr. McNamee is getting. Uh, inflammation, uh, micronutrient and trophic factor deterioration, meaning the support things for the brain health and, and toxins. Those three things. And underneath those three things are 36 to 55 pathways. They're, they're still deciding how many. So it's like a roof with 55 holes in it. That's why a drug is not successful right now because the drug can't target that many holes. Um, and so all of those say, let's just say 55, they influence the driver of those three. And then those three causes master switch to either decide to go healthy cellular formation in the brain or to flip to what's basically a pre-programmed protection mechanism where you form beta amyloid 
the brain is basically shutting down parts of the brain and protecting itself because of these, these um, negative influences. Mm. So what, what Dr. Bredesen has done is reverse engineered all of this over 30 years. And now we, in the end of June, we'll have all the protocols, all the testing, access to the AI, and we run your stuff through that and we can assess risk. And then, you know, if you're in an elevated category, we put you on protocols. And then if you follow them, you don't really have to worry. That's awesome. So yeah. there you go, friends. There's three actions. It reduce inflammation, you know, uh, whatever micronutrients stuff, <laughs> uh, eliminate uh, and protect against toxins. So, I mean, you can do all that right now. So, uh, but they test for it and it's all those things. So last thing, and then if you got questions, we're going to attempt to do it, you know, Wild West style. And uh, sure. so, I mean, we're all- I like that style. We're all used to each other, so it should be fine. If, uh, if it gets too crazy, you can raise your hand and I can see you. If you got a question, I'll call on you. We can try it that way. Uh, if we're going to get into the fancy Zoom stuff, uh, then we, we can also do it that way too. So, Steve, last thing, uh, and because I got to, you, you know what it is, not that you needed a hint, but at the very end, I'm going to ask you a question totally unrelated to this all okay. about team and leadership. Sure. A, a thousand people, did you guys hear that? Every one of them wants to go run and jump off a cliff. You talked about suicide. I, we don't want to say that out loud, but you know, so like, <laughs> like they, they, don't, they don't want to swap roles to your 15 year younger self. Yeah, but here, here's the deal. What's one thing that everyone here that we could be mindful of to not self-sabotage just daily? Like all of us, if we could do a better job of being more deliberate uh, or aware of this aside from the breathing piece what's what do you say so you're asking me that yeah what, okay. what would you say to us one thing self-sabotage in your business right well that that or i mean health mindset all, all anything man that's a huge one um well uh something that comes to mind right away is don't uh don't play the victim card with your health you, you, you are more, much more empowered than you know. That's a good one. Um, I mean, that's a hard question, man. I had no time to think about that that's one. That's okay. I know I just made it up, but that's, yeah. <laughs> a, that's a damn good answer. Well, because okay. you know what, I, what I'm hearing from our patients when they get about six, seven months in and they've got all the results and their plans personalized and they're working with their coaches, they're like, geez, I'm so much more empowered than I thought I could be about you know, if you look on our website, we got a guy named Mitch real quick. He's a famous designer, uh, multi, multi-millionaire. And he got diagnosed with type one diabetes at 60 years old. And Matt look, looked at his data and said, I'm not treating this for diabetes. I'm treating it as an autoimmune disorder. And he went after it that way. And, uh, and Mitch said to me, uh, about three months ago over coffee, he said, you know, when I got that diagnosis, I thought, geez, I'm, I got all this wealth. And I'd been on a 20 year journey with him uh, as a friend. And he said, I thought I might have five years and not see my grandkids grow up. And eight months later, his A1C went from 14.7, which is eye watering, down to 5.6. And he, he's no longer uh, taking insulin. He, he was able to reverse engineer that. And um, and so what he said was, I feel so empowered now. I believe I can live into my 80s now. And I have a whole different perspective on life. So he opened a restaurant. <laughs> That's crazy. Well, well, uh, you know, what's, uh, what I love about that answer is because we, we always talk about self-talk. Yeah. And if you listen, and we're all, I mean, I know everybody on here. The only person who knows them better is their spouse, maybe. Okay, <laughs> so like I could pick out everybody's, Achilles heel. Uh, certainly, I, I they can pick out mine probably too. I can pick out my own. But we say things like, "Well, I'm in pain," or "Well, I'm getting older, yeah. not as young as I used to be." I'm a diabetic, you know. And it, we we label ourselves because other people labeled us, and we think that that's the way it's supposed to be. So your your answer actually is incredible because that's exactly what we talk about. With I, am, <clears throat> you know, I am rich. I have opportunity. I'm abundant. You know, yep. like all the things and being a self-fulfilling prophecy, right. not a self-fulfilling victim. So raise your hand if you got a question for Steve. Let's uh, 
let's uh, I went a little longer, but you, you expected that. So who, who <laughs> is in? you got something to ask uh, or something to share? Don't be bashful, Dr. Halstead. Yeah, hey, Steve. Uh, hey, Dr. Welcome. Jeffrey. Thank you so much for uh, starting this. I was really impressed with how you brought that team together and got, and I was on my way to Seattle as it was, celebrated my uh, son's birthday. Um, and you got a whole mess of stuff together. I got to meet Dr. Matt and get a lot of testing done. Um, looking forward to seeing it. I've been meeting with Michelle almost weekly. Uh, Good. Trying to get through things. Annalisa was phenomenal. Uh, getting things ready for me when I was out there. Um, one of the things that, uh, you know, you hit on about Alzheimer's kind of hit me. I just lost my sister who's two years older than me to Lewy body dementia. Mm. Um, it was uh, horrendous. Sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> but, uh, you know, one of the things that worries us is that, that, you know, there's eight of us kids all together. And so, you know, how mm. do we, we work on that? I guess, you know, I haven't gone through, I haven't gotten any results back yet. Uh, so I don't know exactly where that aspect of things go. Yeah. I've increased my water intake. I've increased my breathing capacity. Um, I still do not have great sleep. Um, that will come. And, uh, yeah, and I know. And it's, uh, it's a little frustrating that way. But that's one thing that kind of worries me because, you know, yeah. that hit close to home. Right. And sleep is a four-phase solution. We don't have time to go through tonight. Uh, what I'll tell you, Jeffrey, is I'm going to make a note. Uh, I'm sure Annalise is doing this, but we we upgraded our genetics partner because they are partners with Dr. Bredesen. And for example, our, our current genetics partner, we do 80 um, genes. Um, <coughs> and for most people, that's fine because we want to know if you have the APOE4 gene or if you have one or two copies of that. If right. one, you're 30% likely to get it. If you have two, 50 to 90 percent, but even the APO two copy people can be prevented. Um, okay. uh, but we have a new Brender. We have 400 genes just in the executive profile with our new one. So I'll make sure that uh, Dr. Matt uh, and them order that one because we just we just started last week with them. Okay. And, and Walter, if you're worried about that, let me know, and we can we can do a second genetics test on you on that. I'll eat it. It's a lot more money, but it's worth it because we get rich data. Yeah, thank you, uh, Dr. Yeah. Halstead. I'm sorry about so, you. Just, yeah, and let me say real quick, just if you just follow what we're talking about as you go through the clinical process, uh, Matt, Dr. Matt, you shouldn't listen to me. Dr. Matt and me will tell you, you know, what risk level you are and how much you need to be concerned, okay? Sure, yeah. sure. Let, let's, uh, I can't see everybody, so... Uh, uh, Dr. Ferris, I see a beautiful background there. I can't see on the screen, so if you got a hand or not. Uh, there we there go. he is, or they are. Coming through. It's a, we're getting the nature background, which is fine. Uh, and then anybody on the phone without the video, if you want to chime in, feel free. Uh, but you all are all muted. Anybody else got a question or want to throw uh, some two cents out there? Dr. Hunt, thanks so much for the uh, video you did and the interview. It was very inspiring and, and, and helpful. And, and you always, uh, you always lead by example. Uh, you're welcome. Well, I've enjoyed the program and I think the video probably uh, said that. <laughs> so I don't know if I have much more to add, except I'm, I'm, I'm loving it. Great. Easy. Easy. What about also? Go Scott, that's the house. Go ahead, yeah. Dr. Ferris and Dr. Moline. Yeah, that's the house that DST bought. <laughs> okay, well, that's, that's the view from our uh, our garden. I love it. It's it's a great, beautiful sky. Doctor Maline, uh, just a quick question. Uh, I guess for me personally, I, I have no responsibility for my health. I haven't exercised since I quit sports, and I haven't been to a doctor since high school. So, if I have a problem, I'm not aware of it. But I do know I'm 61 now, and if I'm going to Look to be 101. I need to do something different than I do now. So my my biggest challenge would be, I think, if I started something was how do you, how do I stay motivated? Yeah, it's a great question. Um, what motivated me was when I started, uh, and I didn't have the benefit of Michelle, who is a brilliant expert at getting people's core whys to come out. Um, she won't let you off the hook. It'll it's a pretty cool experience. Uh, she asks a lot of questions. 
Um, but for me, what it was, was um, what's your first name? Leo. Leo, okay. Dr. Leo is uh, when Dr. Matt confronted me with the truth. He said, uh, you have a, a, a suboptimal serotonin uh, g g uh, and dopamine marker. Um, you uh, also have a norepinephrine marker that I hold on to stress more than anybody else or most people. He said, you have a sleep grade score of a D minus, uh, meaning uh, I have maximal opportunity for sleep disturbance. Um, he says you have dysbiosis of the gut from being on proton inhibitors for 20 years with the acid reflux. Um, also, you don't metabolize starch. Um, he said you have uh, uh, the gene marker for sudden cardio death syndrome, so you can't run anymore. <laughs> um, and then he told me, so I had a lot of bad stuff. My family has really not good genetics. And then he also said, I have three of the five worst genetic markers for cardio, mainly from inflammation. So he said, your, your CRP is five times what I want it to be. And he goes, we absolutely have to get it down. And so I had to completely change my diet, uh, change my workout routine, change how I, my attitude towards sleep. I had to change my attitude toward meditation. I hate it because it's time out. I'm a type A. I don't have time for that. Now I do two 20 minute sessions a day. Still have to work at it sometimes because I, I want to get going. Um, and, but what it was, was being confronted with the data. Um, we're very data driven. We are, there isn't an ounce of woo woo to our program. We are very data driven. Uh, Matt is a clinician. He's not, you know, naturopathic some people get hung up on that and think, you know, it's herbs and flowers. Uh, when you talk to him as a clinician, the guy's got chops and he went through MD school. So uh, that's what I would say is when you get confronted with the truth, it, it really catalyzes change. In addition, we will do a good job of helping pull that motivation out of you. And then our coaching process is meant to um, celebrate wins, gently push you without browbeating and then kind of think about Dan Sullivan talks about gain versus gap. You know, we, we celebrate the game. And so it's a real, we try to make the coaching process upbeat and positive and we don't have a set amount. Like Michelle meets weekly with the people that want to do mindset work. If you want to meet with myself or Colin, Kevin, and you want to do it every week or every two weeks or once a month, we will flex to you. Our, our team is like, we're going to get you through this no matter what. And, you know, and the other, you know, Dr. Moline, here, here's the deal. You are, you're a man on a mission. And, uh, you know, I think it's all fair to say that mission doesn't get accomplished without you leading it. So it really, you're, you're not a, a motivated person for self-interest as much as I would, would, can, could try to cajole you to be. <laughs> uh, but, but you, you are motivated for the bigger uh, impact, right? And yeah. so you have to attach that to your health and, and, and a little bit trust us that the, the superpowers that you will, I mean, you think you're, I mean, you, you, you're not, you're, you're, you're too humble, really. But if you're, you're humble to say this, but you, you know, you're powerful. It's why people want you, why people follow you, it's why you know, you had to bump my weekend because you have a meeting. Okay. You know, it's because, it's because of these things. So here's the deal. Imagine the superpowers when you tap into what you don't even know yet you exist. So whether it is triage in advance, meaning practice what we all preach proactive, don't wait for there to be a problem. Okay. Or it's just simple. How, how dialed in can I get this machine? You know, how, how optimal, okay, can I, can I make this happen? And so that, that is your motivation. And, and, I, and I mean, I think you would also find it as a conquest. That's, that's the other thing. You know, we, we all, to a degree on the screen, have obsessive personality because we couldn't be successful if we didn't. Right. Uh, and so you, have, you look at it as a conquest. And whatever, just like Steve took the, that, that, that blunt reality check, said, okay, I guess the, and, and instead of building the next business, I'm going to build back my health, then I'll build the next business. <laughs> so it just becomes that mission. Right? 
Mm -hmm. I would say act out of vision. You know, I have a vision. I have a nonprofit that we do micro lending in developing countries and we're in 10 nations right now. And I want to be at a hundred nations in about 15 years. So I got to be healthy. I'm 58. I want to be able to leave this when I'm 88. So anyway, enough. that's cool. That's, that's a topic for a whole nother time. See, I told you it's uh, it's why you can't label people and pigeonhole them uh, making an impact worldwide. Let, we got a time for a couple more, maybe one or two more. Anybody, anything at all in your mind? Personal question, stump question, Dr. Calden. Hi, Steve. Thanks. This is all really, really interesting. Um, it, it sounds like it's all very, very personal and individualized and very specific to our own chemistry and everything else. That, on average, a, a, a like a daily commitment to do, sure. to do the process about what what's expected time wise. Yeah, sure. It's hard to average it because it, it it it's a little busy in the first three months and then it kind of spreads out because you got to get you through the clinical process. Uh, uh, so on a daily basis, what we're trying to do is get you early on to commit to about fifteen to twenty minutes of this HRV uh, autonomic nervous system balancing work. Um, but you feel good. So it's like, it's a good positive reinforcer. And then other than that, it's just the time it takes you to implement habits. You know, another habit we have you do is time restricted eating. That doesn't take time. It just takes the discipline to stop taking calories in at a certain time and wait until a certain time. So that doesn't take time. Um, working on your sleep doesn't take time. It's just more of decisions you make. Um, and so it really is not bad. Uh, it, it's the Early on, you got to talk to Annalisa, I mean, Michelle, to do your jumpstart call. And then you have your first call with your coach just to kind of get you started like a weekend after you get your kit. Uh, and then Annalisa talks to you. She's our clinical manager. She used to support the CEO of a major hospital system. She's very high level, um, has worked setting up doctors for 20 years on a daily basis. She manages all the clinical process. So she'll get you on a call where you fill out your health history. And then you get on a 90 minute intake call with Dr. Matt after he has that, where he does a deep dive into your history. And then that's when the personalization starts right there because he doesn't do the same testing for no, for two people. Um, and then, uh, uh, and then it's the time, you know, you're going to have to come to Seattle one time. Uh, we suggest two days. So you have like half one day and a day of the other, uh, cause you go to the Amen clinic and we do a brain scan for blood flow. Uh, and then we'll also be adding an MRI looking at hippocampal volume and some other other things uh, as part of our cognitive piece. And then a, then a cardio scan, and then you do an exam in his office. It's just basic. Um, he's not, because you have a primary care doc who does all that, and he doesn't do female exams on ladies. Um, you do that with your gynecologist. But uh, so that's like a big time commitment one time. But then after that, it's all done through Zoom. And so it's really up to you how much you want to meet with your coaches. And then you have a little bit, you have, you have some home testing kits you have to do. Uh, and then you have to go to Quest one time and get a uh, Uber 16 vials of blood test. It's pretty amazing. Hey, they're small ones though. They don't, you, you, you can walk out, I promise. Uh, so that's really it. Uh, but, it but it is a journey. You got to think of it like I'm climbing a mountain and it's a year. And, you know, you got there over 30 or 50, 60, 70 years, you're not going to microwave this thing and feel better in two months. It's going to be a stage progressive thing, but we see it in progression. You know, the, the sleep, the stress management, you start feeling better. We get you sleeping better. You start feeling better. Maybe a little weight came off and then uh, you get all of your results and Matt gets you on targeted supplements that are supporting your weaknesses. And that's when you start to really start to feel good. That takes about eight weeks. So it, it's a progressive thing. Can, can any of the coaching be done with spouses combined or is it just all sure. strictly independent? No, the only time Dr. Matt insists on one-on-one -on -one is in the intake call because he says that people are more honest when they're not with their spouses. <laughs> um, I don't know why my wife would definitely tell the truth about me. <laughs> more than um, you would. <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah. But, uh, but that's the only time. Like, yeah, I mean, if you want to do it with your spouse, that's totally fine. To be efficient, sure. Okay, thank you. Great, great questions. Great questions. All right, let, let somebody else has something. Steve, why don't you uh, 
Uh, it sounds like there's st some great intrigue and, and yeah. interest here. You want to give, uh, you kind of walk through this, the process there. So maybe just if you're okay, giving out your number again, which is what we did. Yeah, yeah. Uh, my cell phone, this is just the easiest way. Cause then I, you guys, we all have crazy schedules. So I'll just work it out with you through text. It's 616 area code, uh, 403. Uh, 1985, and I'm going to put it in the chat too. That okay. probably would be helpful, right? Yeah, that's fine. You, you, um, 616 403 1985. That's the easiest thing. We have a, a process on the website that you can skip that and just go right to the source <laughs> and talk cool. to me. Sure, and, then yeah. the way, and the way I do this, guys, is I do a discovery where I listen to you, I don't present any sales pitch or anything, I just listen. And then, you know, I gauge and you tell me, okay, I want to know more. Why don't you just show me and let's talk about it. I can do that. Otherwise we schedule a second call where I do that. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. Okay, great. Uh, unless uh, you want the leadership stuff now or was that? Yeah. Yeah. Awesome? Unless anybody has any other questions, throw your, throw your hands up or say something you'll do. Otherwise. Yeah, Steve. So I would love to get, uh, what, what would you say to our friends here, you know, outside of themselves, their, their greatest asset, of course, is their people. Yep. Uh, what, what's the, you know, I mean, you, 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 nobody here believes in like the one thing. We know that doesn't exist. Uh, right. It's a multitude of things. But if you were to say like a leadership lesson from your time in the trenches, uh, and then also, I'm curious in, in, a, in, a, in, a, in two minutes, it, what's something that you believe could be done as leaders on this screen to better the health of the people around them? understanding that yeah. these people have lifestyles you couldn't even call it a tenth of what ours is financially but in all ways right and also that their health impacts their performance it does yeah okay I'll start. their their psyche which makes them want to stay home and call in sick and play hooky and show right. up and be a zombie because of that so kind of two things, but maybe they're sort of related. All right. I'll start with the health thing first. You know, my family, my wife's family and my family, both terrible health, a lot of weight problems, cancer, cardiovascular. So when everybody saw me reinvent myself, they started asking a lot of questions. And, um, and so my daughter and son, I have a 28 year old daughter who's a second grade teacher in Waco, Texas. He's married to an attorney. He went to Baylor and they met there. And then my son was a college baseball player, um, met his wife in LA. Now they live in San Francisco. And what's really gratifying um, is they're all having, they all have aura rings. They've all embraced the lifestyle. They're texting me and telling me their, their readiness score today, or man, my deep sleep was bad, dad. What do I do to fix this? And, and so what's really cool is my, my wife's embraced it. She didn't even go through the program directly. Other than she got the genetics test and Matt said it was the most perfect genetic score he ever seen. And she just throws that in my face all the time. <laughs> um, so, uh, so just by you taking care of you as patient number one and going through this process and learning it, you will for, cause there's a lot of people around you that don't have the financial resources to do this. And what you can do is just share it and spread it and tell them about the habits you're doing and people can level up at some level just by being in your orbit, okay? So that's what I would say, plus just how much healthy you are up here, positive, because it does affect your positive mindset when you feel better. So on the leadership side, I'm gonna give you a concept that I think is really important. Peter Drucker says strategy, or you know, culture eats strategy for lunch. Has anybody ever heard that quote? Um, and and because you can have the best strategy in the world, but if you have a terrible culture and you treat people poorly, you will not execute on that strategy. And so when I was at Pet Supplies Plus, which is a major franchise system, I had PetSmart, Petco, Walmart, every grocery chain in the world, Target, all trying to sell more pet supplies, Home Depot, Menards, Lowe's. And I was like, how can I differentiate this business so that I can make it, you know, uh, like top in its niche and grow fast. And what I came down to through all my research, and this is rooted in research because that's the kind of guy I am. I don't do stuff just off some guy's shout book. Um, what I learned was, is that if you drive a high performance culture, 
you are going to have a great company. And, and it, my, I have another book that you guys get when you sign up, but if you want the book, just tell me, I'll send it to you. It's called Unleash the Peak Performer Within You. This book has 130 some citations in it. And it talks about how to live a high flow lifestyle. A flow state is a real, is a biological fact um, where you're 500% more productive, 430% more creative and you learn 490% faster. Mm -hmm. And uh, so the book's all about that. And uh, part of that is people have to have intrinsic motivation when they work for you. You cannot, and this is something I'll tell you in 35 years of leadership, I cannot motivate anyone from the outside in for the long haul. You just can't do it. They all go lame, okay? That's a Dan Kennedy thing he says. Well, what I learned was, is if I learned how to create intrinsic motivation in them, they will do what I want to do and blow my business up. And that's exactly what happened. And there's three drivers to that. I'll just give them to you right now. Number one is purpose. I'll just give them to you and then I'll unpack them real quick. Purpose, mastery, and empowerment. Those are, that's, that should be your culture Bible right there. Okay. And what, what I was able to do was build that and scale it across our entire organization. All right, I could do another talk another time where I could go for an hour and I could tell you exactly how to do all the steps. And if you want me to do that sometime, Scott, I'll do it free of charge. But we'll, 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 we won't take the boat in front of you just in case, but I, okay. I, I'm, I'm all right. But the, I will, I'm happy to do it though. I love this stuff, but it is, you have to develop with the team, let them develop it, a compelling purpose statement that's a sentence long that the lowest first employee that you have can answer it on a dime like that. And they have to buy into it. And then the second thing is you take every job description in your practice and you create like a one, like a two or a three level progression in it where they get some pay raises, like hygienist one, two, and three, or, you know, desk, front desk, one, two, and three, whatever it is. And you build in training progression in that. Because what happens is when people become part of something that's bigger than themselves and they bought into a purpose and you start to train them and develop them, they feel invested in, that skyrockets their motivation. And then the last step is to then empower them and let them make decisions that maybe you've controlled in the past. Now, I realize in a clinical setting, there might there's some controls you probably have to have clinically, but there's a lot of other decisions that I'm telling you, quit making them. Let, let your team just run the place if you develop them and train them and have the right people in place. Because what happens is uh, interest and, and autonomy drive flow. And, they, and, and interest and autonomy drive intrinsic motivation. So if you build these three drivers into your practice or your business, and then you give them autonomy, Man, it just takes off. And so, you know, we had store managers. We, we converted them all into life coaches, basically. And we had teenagers writing $20,000 orders every week in, our, in each store. Uh, and they, they, their parents would come in and say, what have you done with my kid? They're goal-oriented because they had to have goals. They had to have core values. We built that all into their lives. And they, they said they're like on fire. And it was such. And so I, we, basically I said, we've become a people development and training organization, not a pet business. While the results were phenomenal, we had a, a 78 net promoter score, which is higher than Starbucks and um, Southwest Airlines or who are always cited as the top. They had 64 and 76. Um, our employee engagement scores in retail and national average is 13%, which means 87% are looking for the exit. Our engagement scores were 71%. Only 29% were looking for the exit. And then we were, uh, we were in the top one half of 1% of retailers nationwide for client satisfaction scores by a third party independent company. And you know what? Uh, uh, they did it, I didn't. Mm. Um, so it was a good thing I did that because I would have probably died because I was getting worn down by adding more stores and growing it. But the one thing I did well was create that culture. And that's what I would encourage you to do. That's awesome. That's awesome. Well, hey, that was worth the trip. You didn't even have to go anywhere. <laughs> and so uh, uh, that, that, was, that was super cool. And that was with a thousand, not, not with uh, one or two or three. So 
I, I got not, and also if they join, they get this every month, and I talk about this crap every month. Oh well, <laughs> hey, there you go. That's, <laughs> that's my uh, that's my sales pitch. Sorry. Yeah, even if they keep the potato chips, it's worth doing it for that. Yeah. Well, listen, I think uh, uh, that was very very special. Thank you, Steve, and I, I'm I'm glad I asked. And you know, I happen to know you're a, a brilliant guy, but I think everybody on this screen uh, equally uh, brilliant, you know, to, to or yep. maybe even more than you and more, me. More, I'm sure. And so I, if, if they take just that last the 10 minutes on uh, purpose, mastery, empowerment, in that one sentence, that three tiers, funny, they just heard that in March, uh, job description, concept of progression, and and the decision. I love interest and autonomy leads to intrinsic motivations. Pretty mm -hmm. special. So, uh, well, hey, this has been a lot of fun. Uh, obviously, you you know we're, we're all we're, we're we're buyers here because we all believe in being better. So, buy your own potential, buy your health. I think Tiger Medical uh, Institute is uh, is a great way to do it. Uh, we all know we practice what we preach. So, it'd be you be a good patient, follow a proven system, and you know you'll get the results that you deserve. So, whether you do or not, uh, I'm confident you got a lot out of this uh, time with Steve and. Uh, he, he's a friend of the family forever, and uh, I, I really uh, enjoyed my uh, closer, more intimate collaboration with him and really believe in his mission. I, I live all the principles uh, as well, and, and so it's, it's nice. You, you all had uh, a little, your, your quote today in your calendar uh, was, did the, or dare, dare greatly calendar, Steve, is say, your work is to discover your world, and then with all your heart, give yourself to it. So I would just add to Buddha, I can't imagine, I, I, I would be so bold. I would say, uh, with all your health, okay, you, uh, you give yourself to it. So uh, you're only as good as the health you got, and uh, the wealth becomes so much better uh, when, when, you, when you can enjoy it. So uh, anyway, that's, I think that's a wrap. Let's see if anybody's got anything else they'd like oh, to thank say. Thank you. Scott, just thank you for the time to talk to everyone. I, you just need to know I love people. I care about people. It's personal to me when you come into our world, and it's personal to every one of my team. And we will love on you and care for you. So yeah, thank you. Yeah, listen, thank you. Steve, Steve yeah. you're right. But, I mean, here's the deal. Worst case scenario, I mean, I would find out the data. Right. I mean, you find out one yeah, thing yeah, about yeah. yourself, yeah. but find out one thing about yourself that, that you didn't know that could help you live a better life and be around longer for your kids and grandkids. You know, I mean, it, that's that's worth it. Right. So in all seriousness, I don't care whether you take the principles out of the book or you dive all in like Dr. Hunt and Dr. Halstead and, and several other people who are on the, on, in here tonight. But just most of all, do something with it. Right. Do something with the information that we give you here. And I, I look forward to, to helping you on all areas of your life. I don't know that there's anyone more important than this one. So uh, thanks, everybody. And hey, we'll see you real soon. Thank you, thanks, Scott. Scott. Thank you, everybody. Thanks, Scott. Thanks, Steve. Proud of you. Have a thanks. good week. Bye now.